Hey everybody, Bailey Smith here from Recaptured Values, and today we're going to be doing a video, almost like a 2.0 version to our high-waisted baby bummies. You may have watched the video, it's been viewed now over 70,000 times, which is insane, but we've looked through the frequently asked questions, through the comments, through everybody's questions, and we have pretty much compiled a list of the things that we see most frequently asked and people have trouble with. So we're gonna do a video today, pretty much a brand new tutorial on how to do these big noggin baby bummies. So, and then we're also gonna do it on a sewing machine and show you how to do this entire pattern on a sewing machine so that you don't have to, you know, guess if what you should do or not. So you can see it exactly done on a sewing machine if that's all you have, because you can absolutely make bummies on a sewing machine. Let's get started. The pattern is big noggin baby bummies. It's called the high-waisted bummy. They now have this when we first did this video because my first few videos for recapture values on YouTube. When we first did this video they just had up to sizes 3 to 14. Now they have a kids pattern which is now up to 7 to 8 I believe. It's 4 to 5 to 7 to 8 I believe is the pattern. But so you can get a bigger sized pattern too. So now you can get bummies for your kids from 0 to 3 months all the way up to 7 to 8. So that's awesome. Check that out, we link all of our patterns in every video that we do, any pattern we feature is gonna be linked in the video description. Click. All you have to do to find the video description is click the little downward facing arrow on the right hand side of your screen underneath the video. Click it, all the good information will pop open, including where we get our fabric from. You get that secret. So make sure you click that description. You'll get the pattern link to the video. That's one of the questions we get asked a lot is where do I get the pattern? Click the links in the description. So let's get started with the pattern. So I've already cut out the pattern pieces, just like the original. I have the waistband, I have the back, and I have the front piece here. So the first issue that we had um, that people were like getting really confused about was the leg. This is what it looks like, at least the version that I have, this is what it looks like. It's going to look similar to this. You're going to have two pieces for the kids or the baby sized bummies. So this is the baby size. This is the zero to three month to three T to four T. That's what it looks like there. You get all the sizes. They don't have a layers feature for their pattern. So you have to print them all out and cut the size that you need. It comes with two pieces. What I did in the original video, I like to do is I like to cut the piece that I need, the size. So for the size in particular, the first piece has this little um, size chart here. I'm doing the 18 to 24 months, which is this green dash line right here. So. I'm going to put this like this and I'm going to cut this green dashed line. So let's do that. And I'm going to show you the confusion because if you don't do it like I'm going to explain here in a minute, you're going to have issues with sizing of your cuffs. All right, so I literally cut those two pieces out. So now when you look, some people were just assuming that I didn't tape these together, which is not what I said in the video, but that's what they, they I guess, took from the video, and using these two pieces as cuffs. If you do that, as you can see, one is bigger than the other one, so that's not going to work. So what you have to do, if you want to get two equal pieces to cut on the fold, you could absolutely do it just like this. Put these two pieces together and put a piece of tape there and there's your one cuff piece. You'd only have to cut two of these, not on a fold. That is how the pattern instructions tell you to do it. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and grab some tape, tape this middle piece here because again, you can't just use those two pieces without taping it in the middle because you tape it in the middle and then you fold it, these two sides together here you fold it and then you get the true middle which is not the spot where we taped it here this is the true middle and now you can take some scissors or some snippers just like this and cut along the side here and now you have two equal cuff pieces so to eliminate confusion that is how you do it some of these sizes will trick you though the smaller sizes they actually are similar in size so you could potentially not tape the middle, but some of them are not. So it's best to just go ahead, tape them like normal. And if you want two pieces to cut on a fold, because now you've cut them in half and now you need to cut it on a fold. 
So you need to remember to write fold on one side. So I'm going to take a pen and where this tape line is, I'm going to mark that out and put fold so that I know to cut on a fold. I'm going to take this tape line off and put fold so that I remember to cut this and this on a fold. So now I have all my pieces. Let me throw this away and I have all my pieces. I have my waistband, which is cut on a fold. I have my two pieces here that are cut on a fold. And I have these two pieces here that are all, now all my pieces are cut on a fold because this was the only piece that was not cut on a fold. I like to cut it on a fold. So there we go. The best type of fabric to use for this pattern is going to be a stretchy knit fabric. My favorite in particular is Double Brushed Poly. This one is from Knit Pop. I don't believe they have it anymore. It's probably out of season anyway. But this is a really pretty Double Brushed Poly. You need to learn how your fabric stretches. That is called your grain line and your stretch. And how to determine that is, okay, so this is the wrong side of the fabric. As you can see, a printed side. Wrong side, right side. That's what we're going to be calling this, so just so you know. And then if you look at the fabric, if you have a brand new uncut piece of fabric, mine's not uncut, but this is the selvage edge. The selvage edge rolls, typically, and it rolls to the wrong side. That is true for solid double brush polys as well. It, the selvage edge rolls to the wrong side. So, okay. So, your selvage edge is going to be typically your grain line. I mean, I'm, I, it is your grain line. <laughs> this is going to be your grain line because when you stretch here, it doesn't stretch. That means it's your grain line. So, when you pull here, if it's a stretchy fabric, you pull here, you'll see that's where your stretch is. So, all your pattern pieces tell you the grain line, so that, that means the, the stretch needs to go the opposite. So, I like to put my fabric down with the stretch going this way. So I like to put my fabric down like this. And I'm going to fold my fabric over. And this is how I do all my bunnies. So I've got my fabric right side up. I'm folding it over, wrong side. I'm gonna put my pieces down just like this. And you fold it over just enough so you're not wasting fabric. Fold it over just enough. And I use these little pattern weights. These are just washers um, from a home improvement store. I just got a really big um, set of washers. And so I'm just kind of showing you exactly what I do to get bummies. All right, and then I'm gonna take my two cuff pieces now. And this is why I like to go ahead and cut these and make them two instead of cutting them on a full piece. I just feel like it gives me a really good even cut here. So I'm putting these kind of close together. All right, so now I like to make really straight cuts. I, like, I don't really like fabric being really wonky. Um, that will be wasteful if you are stretched for fabric. Don't do it like that. You know, try to piece it together however you need to do it. But this is for me and my sanity. This is how I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a straight cut here. Okay. So then I'm left with this. So then you're going to start cutting. All right, these are the little scraps from the piece. You can keep these if you have a little bucket or something. I'm going to throw them away just because I've done this for so long. But if I were to keep all my scraps, they would take over my house. <laughs> all right, so then you have your back piece. And your back piece is clearly different than the front because it is not as high rise in the leg here you're going to put your pieces right side together i like to go ahead and just get my pieces set up right sides together no matter what machine you are using this is true for both okay cuffs so this is how the cuff looks when you undo it this is exactly how the cuff would have looked or had you taped them together and left them taped together it's exactly the same right we just cut two so that we didn't have to use this piece Two times I just like to do it like this okay so you're gonna fold it just like it was folded if you if you'd cut your fabric like I did fold it this way and then you'll fold this way like this and then that is your cuff piece that's ready to go this is called the hot hem method and you will now serge the zigzag stitch right there depending on what method you do which we'll do in, in just a minute we're going to do surging on this video, and if you want to check out how to do this on a sewing machine, check out our next video. So that's exactly the same thing on the other one, and now we just need to cut out the waistband. So I'm just going to move these over here, 
of the way and we're gonna cut the waistband. All right, so I'm just gonna literally do the exact same thing. This is the exact same way the fabric was a second ago, so the stretch is still going this way. And now I'm just gonna fold a piece for the waistband. Again, only fold enough. You don't wanna fold too much because you will be really wasteful if you fold. If you overfold and cut, you just wanna fold just enough so that your pattern piece fits on your fold. And then I prepare the waist band exactly like I do the cuffs. It's folded right here. This is the fold. So we're gonna go ahead, it's folded that way and you'll fold it this way. Hot hand method again, and then you'll serge or zigzag stitch here. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna be doing the bummies on the sewing machine. So for people who just have a sewing machine, this is perfect for you guys to see exactly what to do on a sewing machine. I use a Singer Stylus 7258. It has automatic tension, so I can't help you there, but I definitely say consult your manual per fabric type that you're using to determine what best tension settings you need. For me, I like to go ahead and go over here to the zigzag stitch. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna choose number three, and I'm gonna put five width, which is automatically on there. And I'm actually gonna turn this down to 3.5. I like to do a smaller zigzag when I'm doing construction to prevent the um, thread from showing. So that's what I like to do, 3.5, two length, 3.5 width, two length. Plain old zigzag stitch, and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna do the hot hand method exactly like I had already done. And I'm going to go ahead and sew along this edge here. I'm gonna put the folded edge in first. Make sure all my pieces are lined up here. All right, there we go. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it underneath my needle. I like to go ahead and do that and put my needle into the fabric and it's a quarter inch seam allowance, which means this white line here, I'm gonna make sure that it stays on, my fabric is lined up with this white line. On your sewing machine, it'll tell you it typically has the seam allowance lines over here. The white line on mine is the quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I have my fabric in. I'm going to back stitch and then go forward again. And then back stitch again when you get to the front and then pull it out and snip it. So that's what the seam looks like when you zigzag stitch, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and snip my ends here. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut just a smidge off of my seam allowance. Not to the thread, but close enough. Just clean up your seam allowance here. Just to get a seamless, not so bulky seam here. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and quarter my waistband while I've got it here in my hand. So I'm going to snip these two points. This is my seam. I'm going to snip these two points here teeny tiny snips, go ahead and fold it out. And so this is my seam. As you can see, there's not any um, thread showing because the settings I have it on have automatic tension. Again, if you have issues with those settings, it may be your tension and you need to double check your tension with alongside your manual. So now what you're gonna do is match up your seam with the two points that you snipped now. And then you're going to snip here and here to make four equal points so that you have a perfectly quartered waistband. So now that that waistband is perfectly quartered, we're gonna move on to the cuffs. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the cuffs, but now they're gonna be on a smaller scale than the waistband. Exact same thing. Make sure all your pieces are lined up. Again, we prepared the hot hand method in the very beginning before we came over here. Folded edge first. I like to go ahead and put it underneath my needle. And I use my hand wheel um, just because I find that you don't use your hand wheel. It kind of pushes it in. Um, also, another good trick here that <laughs> you can pull your strings at the end to prevent it from pushing your, to prevent the needle from pushing your fabric into your um, feed dog. So you're going to back stitch and then go forward. Back stitch again when you get to the end. Pull it off. So there's your stitch. That was Again, clean up your seam allowance. These are not scissors, but I like to go ahead and use them. All 
I don't feel like getting up and getting my scissors. <laughs> but he's a mess. All right, so there you go. There's your cuff. That's your seam. You're going to snip these two points here. Snip those. Snip those. All right, fold it out. Match up your two points. Match up the seam here. And then you're going to snip point here, point here. So that's the seam in the middle matched up to my little snip points. And then you're going to snip here and here. So now you have all your snip points. This one kind of missed just a smidge. Make sure you get both sides. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other cuff really fast. This is what I meant by you can pull your strings when you get started. It prevents it from going under. It's probably the number one issue with the sewing machines that I've seen people have is, especially with double brush poly, is the machine eating your fabric. That little trick is perfect. Also, the trick of starting on your fabric and then back stitching to the edge, but make sure you're holding those still because it can still uh, eat your fabric. <laughs> And that's so frustrating. I hate it when that happens. Okay, so clean up that seam allowance. Again, make your points. Snip here and here. Then flip your cuff out. All right, match up your two snipped points that you just made to your cuff seam in the back. Snip there and snip it there and now our cuffs our waistband cuff and our leg cuffs are done so now we have these which are already put together right sides together this is the front this is the back so i'm going to go ahead and do the side seams and the crop seam exact same way we just did all that same quarter allowance or quarter seam allowance exact same thing pull your little strings here at the end grab them both just make them tight get started back stitch Pull them again just in case. <laughs> All right. And then you're going to make sure that this is all still lined up there. That's it. All right. So then there's your seam. Snip your points. Again, uh, we'll clean that up in just a minute with a rotary cutter. All right, same thing with the other side seam. Back stitch, pull it out, snip your tails. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Just to clean up your seam allowance. You don't want to cut to your seam. You just want to cut off this extra piece here. It just makes it look better on the inside. You can choose to leave it. It's totally up to you. I just like to make it look more like a serger because the serger does look a little bit more professional. Personal preference, do what you got to do. Especially if all you have is a sewing machine and you want your stuff to look professional. Just do the extra step to make it look magnificent. Alright, so that's the extra there. Um, so that's the side seams there. And so now we're going to do the exact same thing with the crotch seam here. Quarter inch seam allowance, exactly the same. All right, so I didn't hold my strings and it kind of pushed it down, but you can go ahead and pull your strings and it'll pull it out. All right, so then kind of pushed it out there, but that's not gonna be that big of a deal. Again, just trim your seam allowance. So then this is what you're left with. You have your crop seam and your side seam sewn up already. So what I like to go ahead and do right now 
is this little spot right here. Um, I like to go ahead and snip that off just to make this even. I like to go ahead and snip it and just make it even. That little triangle spot. That weird spot right there. I like to go ahead and snip it off. Just to make my piece here even and I find that makes putting the cuffs on more even. And so that's all I mean by that. It's just making sure that you cut it and it's pretty even. There's a little piece right there. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna quarter the openings. So we have a side seam here and a side seam here. So we're gonna match up those side seams and get a front and a back point here on the waist opening there. And then make sure those side seams are still lined up and then get your front piece here. And then we have our four points for the waist opening. We're gonna do the exact same thing with the legs here. You're gonna take your side seam and then match it up with your crotch seam. And then you are left with a back point and a front point here and here. Snip and snip. And then you're gonna do the exact same thing with the other side. Match up your crotch seam and your side seam. You have a front point and a back point. Snip and snip. So now you have all your stuff quartered and ready to go. So let's grab the pins. All right, so we're gonna do our cuffs. So this is a side seam. Grab your cuff, your leg cuffs, and get the seam in your hand. So this is the seam right here for the cuff. And I like to go ahead and match it up on the inside so our garment is still wrong side out. You're gonna put your cuff into your leg hole and match up your seam for the cuff to the crotch seam here. And I'm gonna show you what nesting your seam is here. So I like to go ahead and nest my seams because it makes it easier to line up your seams. And what nesting your seam means is this seam allowance, my seam, is going this way. So that means I'm gonna put my crotch seam going this way. And it pretty much just sandwiches between the line here. It just kind of same, which is the line. So I'm gonna go ahead and go around to the side seam here. Get those in. So here is my side seam, right here, right here. And then you're gonna put a pin in. And then match up your other points here. And then do the exact same thing on the last side here. All right, so there is the cuff. And the cuff is naturally smaller than the opening, which means it will require you to stretch it. See, when you look at this is the opening, and you can see that the cuff is smaller than the opening. But when you stretch it, that opening lays flat. So that's why you quarter because you will evenly stretch so you don't have any ripples or excess fabric. So we're going to go ahead and pin the other um, cuff on. So this is the crotch seam. This is the side seam. Grab the other cuff here. Get the seam um, in your hand right here. And then go ahead and match it up the inside. Again, we're going to do the exact same thing, nesting the seam. Which means one seam's going one way, one seam's going the other. Pull it around, match up your other points here. And then two more pins. Two more pins. All right, so then now your cuffs are perfectly pinned to the inside of your garment. And so what I like to do is I like to go ahead and sew in the round. So here's the side seam pin here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this underneath my sewing machine and remove this pin that it's underneath, okay? 
and I'm gonna go ahead and get started just a little bit so that the needle and thread have gone into the fabric and I'm gonna hold this pin here and pull it ever so slightly just to make sure that all my raw edges are lined up because I'll have two raw edges for my cuff and I'll have one raw edge for my opening. You want all three of those to be lined up at all times. And don't overstretch or you will have ripples in your fabric. So go ahead and do your seam allowance, quarter inch seam allowance to your next pin. And then when you get close to it, remove it. And then adjust your fabric to go to the next pin. Again, you're stretching just enough so that everything's laying flat and all your raw edges are still lined up. Okay, we're almost to this pin. Do the exact same thing again. Remove that pin. Pull it ever so slightly. the very last pin here go around and then you're just going to overlap where you originally started overlap it and then back stitch a little bit and then pull it out and then you're going to cut all your little tails off here and then you can clean up your seam allowance if you choose to do so which I do, I'm not gonna do it right now, but you can absolutely um, snip that seam allowance, which I will do in just a moment. I'll do it at the end. So we're gonna do the next cuff exactly like we just did that one. I like to start on a side seam here, which is this seam. Put side seam down, put my needle right over this pin and remove the pin, and then go ahead and get the next pin started. Pull just enough so that all three lines, all three layers are still lined up. All right, you go to your next pin, remove that pin. Go to your next piece here, get it situated, get all your fabric still lined up. You do this with every single pin. to this one so go ahead and pull that pin move to the next one make sure you're stretching just enough so everything's laying all nice and flat and all three edges are still lined up make sure that you're still paying attention to your seam allowance so making sure that it's a quarter inch seam allowance all right we're on to our last little stretch here When you started, back stitch, and then pull it out. Snip all your little end pieces here, and then we will clean up that seam allowance in just a minute at the very end when we go over here to the scissors. Okay, so then that's what the cuffs look like. We're gonna go ahead and do the waistband. So you need to determine what the front and the back is. You can tell that by the cuffs. The cuffs are slightly longer or lower in the back than they are in the front. So this is the back. I like to put my waistband seam here. I like to put the seam in the back. And so just like we did the cuffs, you're going to put the waistband seam inside the garment just like this. Match up your point to the seam. Pin it and go all the way around your waistband with three other pins. Making sure that everything is quartered up. Last point here. Okay, and so I like to go ahead, and this is the back here. This is the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, here's the back. I like to start right here because I like to add my tag in the back. So I'm gonna start on this side seam. And I like to put it with the wrong side of the garment facing out rather than going in the round just because it's easier to add tags. 
And if you are a compliant shop, which if you're selling, you really need to be compliant. We'll link information down below in the video description to learn more about compliance. If you're gifting or selling, you need to be compliant. So um, check that link out down below and you'll have a whole bunch of good information, good places to buy tags to make sure that all the information on the tag is compliant, but enough about that. You can check out the link below. So we're gonna go ahead, exactly the same, seam allowance, making sure all your edges are still lined up. Go to your pin, remove it. Then you're gonna pull your fabric over here. And it's exactly the same with the leg cuffs. You're gonna pull it just so you know that your two cuff edges and your one opening edge are all still lined up. Maintain that quarter inch seam allowance. So to our next pin here, we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Grab your next piece here, which is gonna be, this is the back piece here. So make sure you don't go all the way to that yet. So I'm gonna get really close to the pin, but not quite. It's about right there. I'm gonna remove my pin, and I'm gonna grab my sew-in tag here, which is a foldable tag. So I fold it just like this. Get our fabric situated. All right, so my seam is right here, and you can tell that by just feeling it. You're gonna put your tag right over that seam right up against the edge here, and you're going to hold on to it while you're sewing. And just sew right over your tag. So that your tag is sewn on there. And then you're gonna follow up with the very end piece here. Overlap, back stitch a little bit, just to make sure that you get that secured. Pull that. Snip your end pieces here, and now your tag is on there. It's like a little crooked. It slipped just a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. So now let's go clean up our seam allowance and then flip this out and see the final result. All right, so I find the easiest way to clean up my seam allowance on long pieces like this is to lay it flat, make sure all your edges are flipped out, and then just use your rotary cutter to get a really clean edge here. Cut your piece that you can and then fold it out to the next piece here. Again, making sure there's no wrinkles underneath and all your three pieces are folded out. Be really careful not to cut too close to your um, seam because you can make it unravel because it would really be bad to pop your seams that you just did. And this is just literally cleaning it up, making sure that it looks a little bit more professional using a sewing machine. I missed a tail here. All right, last little piece here. Make sure it's all flat. All right, so now that waistband is done. And so that's how it's all cleaned up now. And so let's do our leg cuffs. Make sure that those are all lined out here. So I'm gonna make sure that, th make sure the underneath is not caught in this while you're doing it, because that would be really bad and you'd cut your fabric off. Be really careful not to cut your fingers. Also, using a sharp knife or rotary cutter is not very safe. So you have to be really careful. All right. This is just an extra step to make the inside of the garment look good. It's totally optional. I just find it makes the um, final result look really good, especially if all you have is a sewing machine and you want to sell or gift. This is a really good way to get a really professional finish. So there is it all cleaned up. Let's do this last one here. All right, so we've cleaned up our seam allowance and now let's flip this thing out. I've got lint on me. Okay, flip it out and you have sewing machine bunnies.